always ask the experienced riders. They will suggest you the best route, the best plans, the best places to stop. Always ask them. Don't um, don't be shy to ask them that what they will think and all. Just ask them, and they will suggest you the best route. And also, do your own research. Don't just go blindly, and don't just follow the Google Maps blindly. Hello and welcome back to today's podcast and uh, today we are going to talk about cycle touring for beginners and uh, we have a special guest today and that is Nilesh he is the admin of Riding Falcons so Nilesh will give us a short brief uh, introduction about himself and his riding group and we will also ask him to share some experience about motorcycle touring uh, which a lot of beginner riders can uh, use as a reference point so let's start with a very short introduction about our guest today hi motozo so hello audience i am nilesh manti and uh, i have been riding from like since class 6 and uh, mostly i have done long rides so yeah uh, the topic which we are discussing today so i think i am pretty much eligible for that speaking on that topic so yeah motorcycling First of all, we need to understand what is motorcycling, right? Motorcycling is a pure passion. It's pure passion. You are not getting, you are not getting anything from it. It's just pure peace of mind, and it's just pure passion. As as we all know, as all bikers can really relate with this, that motorcycles will will give you peace, and it will give you the sense of freedom, right? So, for beginners, I would suggest that uh, first of all, just don't rush, and motorcycles don't matter when you tour if you have a 125 cc or a 400 cc that just really doesn't matter if you have that passion if you have that will if you have that guts you can do touring and you can go like anywhere anywhere around this world so moving on to the next part of the podcast it's about planning your first tour so the first thing that comes in our mind is which motorcycle we select as you can see he has a dominer 400 but i am pretty sure he did not start with a dominer yeah, obviously, uh, you don't buy a first bike as Domina, <laughs> don't make that mistake. So, I actually started with a 110 Scooty, uh, Hero Pleasure, I used to ride in that. After that, my upgrade was this Domina 400, so it was a pretty big upgrade, I guess. Why don't you share something about your first bike, touring on it, especially? I'm sure uh, you might have felt a lot of things are missing compared to what you're riding right now. Yeah, so... My first bike, actually it was not a bike, it was a scooty and uh, my first touring experience was not that great because obviously there was a, a there was lack of knowledge at that point of time and uh, while touring on scooty there is a very big problem that is with the back, there is a huge, ba there is a huge back pain while riding on long uh, well while riding long on scooties and as well as there is also mileage issues because scooties are not meant to take long. But after that when I bought Dominar, so my touring actually started at that point of time only because when I, when I had Scooty, I didn't get much permission to ride, so yeah. I'll share something about my experience also. I also had a, a I think a, it was a Hero, Mestro. So that was my first Scooty and uh, obviously I did not have touring in mind when I bought it. It was only for commuting. But uh, one thing for sure that we all started somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So maybe after you got your Dominar, uh, I can see you have invested a lot of money in riding gears also yeah. and also on the bike. Yeah. So let's talk about riding gears for touring. What is your first preference? Like for uh, what is your choice currently you're using right now? Uh, first of all, I would suggest uh, the beginners, ri beginner riders out there, before upgrading a motorcycling motorcycle, upgrade yourself first. Like if you are buying a motorcycle for worth like what two lakh rupee, at least buy riding gear for fifty thousand because it is a mandatory. You will realize it later be why because why you need a uh, expensive riding gear. But yeah, at least invest a good amount of money on riding gears. And yeah, currently I am uh, using Rhinox and Revit. 
Revit uh, as a street jacket and my Rhinox as a full pro touring gear. The Stealth Evo and uh, the pants I guess I have, uh, it's also that Stealth Evo set only. And uh, for the touring purposes and all, I if you can see here I have got my top box, saddle stays, crash guards and all, without necessary modifications. That's it. So, um, there are a lot of questions sometimes people have that you should get a hard luggage system or a soft luggage system but uh, i think i can see in domina is using a hard like hard top box yeah, only hard top and box. i think uh, at least for domina uh, it's not a big issue uh, you know with the balance and uh, uh, everything i've ridden his bike but uh, this will not go th this is not the same with other bikes maybe like uh, for example we have an rs 200 here 200 and uh, rs 200 here and uh, I think it will not be a good idea to use this setup on that at that same bike. So, same thing will not work on every bike. So you have to ve be very, very, you know, you have to do some research and all. So now we'll talk about how we can plan the ride because a lot of uh, new riders, they have no idea. They just see somebody, somebody's video maybe, and uh, they might continue, you know, planning their ride without actually properly planning it. So. Uh, as an experienced rider, what do you suggest somebody, if somebody, for example, somebody is going to Darjeeling maybe. Uh, if you are going to Darjeeling, how you will plan your ride? Maybe in a very short way you can say. Uh, first of all, for beginners, rider, uh, beginners riders, uh, I would suggest that travel light. Don't take much luggage because the more you get your bike heavy, the more unstable it will be. Try to travel with as less luggage, as much less luggage as possible because if you are make, making your motorcycle heavy then uh, it's not of, uh, it's, it can be a big issue because for example I am giving if you are carrying uh, a lot of luggage on your motorcycle and if you unfortunately if you have a fall then it's not a good thing. It can actually hamper your luggage as well as your uh, bones as well. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, so I think the lighter you go, the better it is for you. And uh, after luggage, the route planning is also important. So uh, maybe you can take help from somebody who has already gone to that same location. Always ask the experienced riders. They will suggest you the best route, the best plans, the best places to stop. Always ask them. Don't um, don't be shy to ask them that what they will think and all. Just ask them, and they will suggest you the best route. And also do your own research don't just go blindly and don't just follow the google maps blindly and uh, yes one more thing when you're starting off uh, your first uh, long tour um, i would suggest don't push your limit if you if you are capable of riding maybe like 300 400 500 kilometers a day don't try to push to 1000 like other bikers are doing so uh, don't follow like you you don't have to push yourself that much if you are unable to ride if you're not at your hundred percent mentally i think you should just take a break for that day yeah that's a very good point actually uh we see it to it's touring it's not a race you're not racing against time and you are you just do, you're not racing you just need to go right you just need to reach to your place safe and sound see uh doing thousand kilometers in a day is not a very big deal nowadays but if you can then only you do because just don't push your limits because uh, i can say with uh, one uh, one incident with experience that uh, while i was on my uh, route from chennai to kol uh, jamshedpur so my first stop i thought uh, i would take in vishakhapatnam that was nearly 1900 kilometers but i decided to stay at rajamundri i was not tired but uh, my friends and family called and they said that uh, you should not ride at night and you should take a stop and i was like eh, i can do it because i don't feel tired and all but the moment i checked into the hotel at raja mundri when i slept i was totally blackout i was totally blackout because i was that much tired i was not understanding at that moment that i was tired but yeah my body was totally fatigued so just don't push it because if you are pushing it you will get sleepy and if you get sleepy while riding a motorcycle it can get pretty dangerous and uh, so i think that was it for the planning part of your uh, tour eh, na, bhai? motorcycle touring for beginners so obviously in the later part of the podcast uh, 
we will have uh, other guests as well who will share their experience from their recent trips so now we have already discussed uh, the basics we'll also talk about what are the things we can pack we should do and how we should be prepared because uh, i have seen a lot of riders they don't even know how to change their clutch cables how to adjust their clutch cables and this is very important because when you're going on a long ride uh, you should always be prepared for anything to happen on road don't you agree with that uh that was a very val uh, that was a very valid point actually at least you should know some nicks and knacks about a motorcycle the right thing would the right thing would be that if you are if you are riding a motorcycle you should also know about your motorcycle and how to fix it so basic things like ch- uh, like chain tight uh, lube your chain normal cable change and all puncher puncher is a very common thing nowadays and at least you should carry a puncher kit a basic tool kit that will help you to open up your bike these are the uh, few things that you must carry because you never know when you going to need them uh, from my prior experience like recently uh, while i was on my way from jamshedpur to kolkata uh, this uh, belly pan of my bike it just uh, fell down the bolts and all i don't know what happened because of uh, domina's vibration the belly pan just uh, fell off and uh, i was uh, ultimately shocked then what to do so i had carried zip ties bungee cables and tool kit so my the, like first course of action was to remove it i could have i done that because i had a tool kit if i didn't had a tool kit i had to search for a mechanic and that could have caused me harassment plus in that in this uh, kolkata heat so that's why i always suggest the new beginner riders as well as the experienced riders that uh, at least carry a tool kit and uh, few zip ties and they will always come in handy and uh, talking about spares i think the man behind the camera knows the importance of carrying a fuse <laughs> extra fuse with a recent incident <laughs> so uh, yes always know how to you know you should know how to change the fuse of your motorcycle uh whatever be uh, which, whichever motorcycle you have so you should just ask your mechanic how to change it at least so uh, another thing i would like to talk about is uh, your fitness and your body's you know hydration like water levels and all these things so when you're going on a ride uh, always stay hydrated you should you should carry a hydration pack yeah so this concept of uh, concept of hydration bag can be a little sketchy i'll tell you why because uh, carrying a hydration bag can also cause you a little bit of back pain i'll tell you one experience uh, while i was uh, on my way from chennai to bangalore i was doing and i carried a hydration bag my mistake was i filled the hydration bag full like almost 2 liters of water and i was carrying it on my back like after 200 kilometers i was uh, experiencing a little mild back pain so it should not happen right actually what you should do that avoid anything at your back while you are traveling don't carry any bag i'll give a very small tip if you have a hydration bag and if you have a tank bag you can actually keep the hydration, hydration bag, bag in the tank bag yeah you can actually keep that uh, hydration bladder in the tank bag and that will be a lot easier and a lot more comfortable because i'll tell you if you like if the audience can relate if you are carrying a like backpack and you are riding a motorcycle you will after some time you will feel a, a slight backpack like a, a back pain and uh, that will cause you uh, uneasy and you won't be able to ride much i'll tell you honestly but if you are tying your uh, luggage at your back and you will be your shoulders are free then you can mi- uh, munch miles more right i totally agree with you so um, yes the less you carry the better is, it is for you but always you know keep the basic things uh, with yourself that does right so not carrying a hydration bag that doesn't mean you don't drink water please stay hydrated <laughs> otherwise you are going to faint biking is not not a joke today's the like uh, what is today's scene that we are seeing in uh, this youtube videos and all people are doing this iron bird challenge and all india ride and golden quadrilateral right they are taking it as a challenge they are not enjoying the ride okay they are taking it as a task don't do it enjoy your ride motorcycle is pure peace and pure passion enjoy it embrace it and please take care of yourself drink water stay hydrated
and are you planning to get your names in any book of records <laughs> just being sarcastic uh, as of now i like my own peace and i would like to stay more anonymous and today's generation fame is uh, today's fame is a little different we if you can uh, understand if you know what i am saying today's fame it's a little bit uh, sketchy and little bit uh, i would not like to comment on this yeah i, I know the reason why koshik da is smiling <laughs> behind the <laughs> camera so anyways uh, we will be wrapping this segment up and uh, now we can talk about riding groups as well a little bit not too much in detail we'll cover a complete podcast on riding groups maybe next uh, in the next episode uh but uh, i think for beginner riders i would suggest that you should go with somebody who has a little bit of experience or if you if you're going with somebody who knows nothing about motorcycles yeah. who just wants to go like achieve uh maybe go to a place that's it i think it's not a good idea what do you think so what i will say that today motorcycling people think it's very easy you just need to buy a bike and you start riding that's motorcycling but uh, that's uh, very wrong you that's not motorcycling motorcycling is a feeling and yeah about uh, riding groups uh, being an admin of my own riding group i would tell that uh, your vibes should match that aura that same thinking about motorcycles that you love motorcycles and all that should be there in a group that will automatically cause a sense of unity and unity is strength as we all know and yeah stay away from the riding groups that uh, that suggest you to push your limits everyone has their own limit uh, first of all i would say that if you are um, starting then don't join a riding group because yeah they will try to push you that cover your kilometers but just don't uh, join a riding group at first ride your motorcycle know your motorcycle then you join a riding group that makes more sense i totally agree with you i think you should go for solo breakfast rides also yeah. and after once you are getting along with your own motorcycle so after that you can maybe if you if you think that you can go solo you can surely try why not but if you think you need somebody you can join a responsible riding group yeah. that is very important a uh, riding group which doesn't you know discriminate you with with uh, which motorcycle you're owning or a lot of other things so uh, i think that was the basics about it now we will share some experience from a few riders who will be joining us and uh, they will also be giving introduction about themselves so i think we uh, we should we should call them right now yeah, maybe yeah. they can share a little bit of sure. their maybe a good and a bad experience yeah. of their motorcycle yeah. so now we will have few riders share their experience they will also give a very short introduction about themselves uh, and they will also share how many kilometers they have toured as of now because that is a uh, kind of important but i think that quality touring is also important so it doesn't mean that if somebody has ridden his motorcycle for maybe like 50 60000 km they might have some issue with their skills also so which we need to work on so maybe let's start with uh, rahul he will give a short introduction about him his motorcycle and a good story about a good uh, experience about from his touring motorcycle touring and also a bad experience so let's start hey guys so uh, this is rahul and i got into motorcycling for almost around it's been 3 years approximately now so it started way back in 2019 i got into a friend's bike and we were supposed to go to uh, we were supposed to go to a like a short tour from around I was in college at that time and we were supposed to go to Puri via Konark and Chandravaga. So I had zero experience at that moment. 
and uh, so i just hopped into the bike i barely even knew how to ride a bike at that point was like a revelation to me and it was like i i found a new thing it connected to me and it was like i wanted to know about it so fast forward to two more years i bought my first bike and uh, it's a fz that's the one that i am riding right now so uh, a lot of you know that i also used to have a fz25 and uh, uh, looking at his bike i think it's a very good beginner's bike but i'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that he thinks that is missing in the bike when it comes to touring so so yeah like like he said that it's a fz it's a commuter it's a great beginner motorcycle so i wanted that because first i wanted to hone my skills i wanted to know how to properly ride a motorcycle as per se rather than getting it out and uh, traveling kilometers first so uh, like fz it's a it's a commuter motorcycle i cannot expect it to do everything so i i had my fair experience of touring on the fz as well as other bikes so uh, firstly the posture plays a very important role the cruising speed that's a very important role however that's a bit controversial because uh, it depends on people's comfort levels i have seen uh, fellow brothers they have bigger cc bikes but they tour like uh, when they are touring obviously they are maintaining a speed of 100 and 110 and i have seen a lot of people with smaller bikes they are trying to push to 130 140 as well so i think that's not a good idea just uh, for highway speed i think uh, as per me uh, maybe like 100 110 is a good speed so do you have any bad experience recently uh, i i am aware of that i am pretty sure everybody who is behind the camera they are also smiling they know that that story so would you like to share it with everyone so uh, i learned motorcycling mostly by falling down okay so i crashed my bike firstly when uh, within the third day i got my first bike i crashed it on that Uh, within three days, I didn't even get the number plate by then. So most of the things that I have learned till now, uh, by God's grace, I have learned a few things. Uh, most of them were by falling down. I have fell down on plain roads. I have fell down on trails. I have fell down on mountains. So the most recent experience that I barely had that you all were talking about, it was on I was touring Meghalaya at that point. So it was on a Dominus. So. I must say I really love the bike but uh, I have a rather love and hate relationship with the bike because uh, there was my fault as well so we were going around 70 or 80 at a point and we were about to hit a uh, bend a uh, highway bend so we were going there and uh, I misjudged the corner I thought it was a normal corner but it turned out to be a hairpin so i entered there i entered there at a speed of almost around 70s or 80s and uh, my fault was i didn't trail brake i didn't have the concept of trail braking proper even if i had that it was not in my muscle memory at that point of time so i entered there and unfortunately when i did enter i saw that it's a hairpin and i panicked i hit both the brakes even though there was no clutch involved the rear abs failed and the rear wheel got jammed and i slid out so my gear saved me a lot i didn't have a scratch however my pillion uh, he had a lot of bruises so that's a thing uh, that that was what i was saying actually you should actually know about the nicks and nacks of hitting mountains or doing things and because you might not have you might not be as lucky as i was and things can get uglier so exactly when you are hitting the mountains touring like uh, going to the mountains you should always be very uh, aware of your surroundings and also your skills because one small mistake can also risk your uh, uh, pillion's life as well your life and pillion's life so i think beginner riders they should avoid carrying a pillion uh, that's what i suggest uh, carry a very light luggage and uh, yes just you know try to upskill yourself as well so now we can uh, go on to introduce somyajit 
and uh, he'll give a very short introduction about himself and how he got into uh, touring on his motorcycle so hello everyone myself somojit mondol and i have been in biking from last 5 years but uh, at that point of time i was not owning a bike of myself i used to do tour in my friend's bike or with my uncle's bike like that and from the past 2 years i am being owning a motorcycle which is rs200 bajaj pulsar rs200 the concept of buying that motorcycle was half touring and half that i like a sports bike so when i uh, was going to buy it first of all uh, the first thing which i was keeping in mind that when i will go for touring i should be having a comfortable posture but usually we see that uh, in a sports bike we don't get a comfortable posture it's a lean posture what you usually usually see in a sports bike but in a rs200 other than uh, other uh, sports bike which is uh, present in the market we see that the leaning posture is less than the other sports bike so i choose this uh, this bike so uh, i think rs200 is a very good bike and uh, the the riding posture is not very aggressive and it's also not very upright so you are very much engaged when you are touring on it now uh, why don't you share your experience of you have any uh, done any recent trip and uh, what how did you plan for it what was good about it and uh, what could have been better so firstly i used to do short trips like uh, going to kolaghat like the weekend trips and uh, the first long trip for me was uh, diga mandarmani which is not i would say a long trip for me as of right now uh, but uh, one of the most one of the most favorite trip we, uh, for me is the sikkim trip which i had recently gone uh, la, uh, in the la month of march i guess so first of all that was the first trip which i went with a biking group i won't say the name of the biking group sure. uh, you can share if you want no i can share but uh, there are many uh, problems which i don't want to discuss because okay. you can understand that in social media there can be a controversy and i don't want that controversy to come in your podcast right no issue i, I love controversies <laughs> but obviously we will not name any groups yeah. maybe next uh, next episode when we talk about riding groups i think you can share yeah, the yeah, that experience <laughs> and uh, and uh, yes i will also share a little bit of my experience in the next episode about riding groups the main point of going with a riding group was that my family didn't allowed me to go solo because obviously in a middle class families uh, parents won't allow you to go solo for any long trips without any prior experience so i joined that group and went for the trip uh, we were total four and we were riding solo so there were two people who were experienced and two of us were non experienced so the ride was going on perfect at some point of time the experienced riders they used to keep a uh, speed of 130 because they were having a better uh, better power of motorcycles than us but uh, sometimes we felt a problem that we could not cope up with them so that's the first point i felt that uh, i felt the difficulty but uh, overall other than that i would say that the trip was very good and the first point i would say that before going to a trip the planning is very important because if you are unplanned you don't know that where to stay or how much kilometer you should cover in one day because you don't know that uh, what are the road conditions and what are the climate conditions but we were planned in the for the whole trip but the main problem we faced of the climate conditions when we uh, started our ride the climate was perfect we checked the weather forecast and all the weather was perfect but when we reached sikkim it suddenly become cloudy and for continuously four days it was raining heavily for which our trip just got postponed and we need to stay at the hotel yes obviously uh, anything can happen in a trip with the weather with whatever anything so you always have to be very prepared basically whatever he said so uh, a 
lot of you might not know me and somojit we hit the uh, highway first time together so even there i did a lot of so <laughs> and over there what happened was uh, so like he was saying that you might get into a group might not know a lot of people and what might happen is you will find them the more than the motorcycles what should matter more is the psychology of riding should match match so yes uh, i think uh, the bonding should also be there coordination should also also be there so even if you are riding with two people make sure that they are very two two or three quality people they are very good uh, and you coordinate very well when you when you are riding on the highway because it's very important it can be a life and death situa- situation so why don't you share your uh, bonding with somajit exactly so basically uh, like mostly what we try to do is uh, what i try to do is i tend to avoid large groups okay so mostly what i tend to do is i tend to ride with my friends friends i know uh, know my limits i know their limits i know how they react they know how i react right so uh, what that makes sure is no one falls behind no one goes away and uh, everyone knows that if someone is not coming back they make sure to come back and see if there is some problem which i have seen in a lot of people that they lack yeah exactly i have seen that the lack of responsibility in riding groups so we will we will touch up these topics in the next episode when we expose the riding groups there's a lot of riding groups i obviously i'll not name a lot of it, uh, experiences uh, are there obviously uh, we might also have a lot of experience good experience because um, yes as well as maybe few bad experiences so i think uh, that is all and uh, maybe now if anybody has any questions uh, regarding to touring if you guys have any questions you want to ask maybe like a small if you need any suggestion from us him or maybe you know we can also do the same so do you have any questions as the topic uh, between the post- podcast was that the tips for beginners i would say you will find many riders who will say that i have completed this much kilometer in this much of time so for them it is a target based but for the real riders they don't target a destination for that uh, i am going that much kilometer in uh, that much of time most of the riders they just generally enjoy the ride while they are riding on the highways or any trails or the mountains whatever so i would suggest all the beginners that whenever you are starting your ride first ride or after some experience never go for that time uh, limitations don't uh, target or don't set a time limit that i have to cover that much distance in this much of time that can cause harm to you or that may be a fun for many uh, riders but at the back of the mind we need to keep that in mind that that can be harmful okay. i totally agree with what he said and uh, yes uh, another thing is that if you are a beginner don't think that you will be able to you know mount your gopro and mic and will be able to vlog the whole journey because it's not an easy thing once you have experience you you will be able to do both the things at the same time so that was my suggestion and uh, rahul do you have any small question i have a question towards you so one big factor in the motorcycling uh, touring thing is uh, the fitness factor so people tend to uh, ignore that a lot so uh, a very big thing is what i believe there should be some sort of you should have some basic strength some basic fitness so what are your views yes i think uh, fitness level is very important when it comes to touring my uh, my experience with this is that uh, when i went for a very long trip i mean i think for me it was pretty long for my experience at that time um, i like fortunately i did not have any back pain uh, a lot of riders they uh, complain about having back pain i think with fc there were like few factors that actually helped me uh, you know not having back pain one was the handlebar rifle that gave me a very good posture another thing was the figo float air seat that actually saved my butt and uh, the third thing was that uh, maybe like working out 
training your lower back because lower back will be a uh, very important especially when you are riding or even if you are into motorcycles and uh, i think a lot of riders they lack uh, this thing so you should always be prepared mentally as well uh, physically and also financially <laughs> because anything can go wrong so don't think that okay i'll try to uh, you know go on this trip my budget is only 7000 don't do this because uh, in the highway you will not have any options to borrow or beg from anybody and we will talk about all these things uh, in the next uh, episode also because they have been few experiences of few influencers who are doing this and i will obviously not name them they are not from kolkata by the way don't worry i am not exposing kolkata influencers so basically as he said that the budget factor is actually a very big factor we might also so uh, a small small example from my end so when i was returning from meghalaya so we were supposed to uh, that was actually a case of very bad planning so we planned to go from dogi to shillong and uh, board our train that night itself so that was actually very bad planning and what happened was uh, while we were going we had traffic jams we had a heavy downpour it was raining cats and dogs and the visibility was next to zero so uh, what i decided was uh, i decided to stay back board a flight next day so but unfortunately two of my friends uh, they were not able to do that because they had a very concise budget so they actually took the risk and drove 200 kilometers in that condition to board the trains and uh, they reached by hook on crook at nights at those conditions they recorded that and uh, they were riding at almost 120 130 uh, what would you like to add about budget <laughs> in a riding trip because i think it's important at least you should have a little bit uh, maybe saved or something uh, budget on a riding trip is uh, very important i'll say uh, tell you why uh, if you have a fixed budget like uh, suppose uh, 10000 uh, suppose 10000 okay you are riding your motorcycle suppose if anything happens suppose like a breakdown happens what will you do if you are less on cash and always yeah always this google pay and all don't rely on google pays and all at least carry some amount of cash because local mechanics are not going to accept google pay and all and you are going to be screwed completely yeah and budget also comes in here because uh, you need to keep a very good budget like if you are planning for a 10,000 rupee budget at least take 15 take that 5 thousand extra for your bike because it's a machine at at the end of the day it's a machine and anything can go wrong right uh, you are riding a uh, it it, uh, it can, can um, be it can cause a breakdown or um, accident maybe you need uh, that um, instant money instant cash not google pay and all i'm talking about proper cash keep something five thousand six thousand extra and it will be a it will very be it will be very beneficial for you like that and uh, i think uh, maybe that is all for today's episode one more most important thing i'll add is that uh, make sure you have a good health insurance before going on a motorcycle ride because if things don't go well then i have experience that i'll share uh, maybe in the next uh, episode from a riding group see uh, about this health insurance the thing that we do motorcycling it's not uh, easy business it's very risky uh, I think it's very not controversial but yeah somewhere around we also know that uh, the things that we do is pretty dangerous and yeah and we really don't know what will happen the next day and yeah uh, from our parents also we also know how our parents feel when we are on a long ride and uh, yes obviously uh, talking about talking about touring on motorcycle uh, don't push your partner if they are not comfortable with it. I have seen a lot of people, especially in Kolkata. <coughs> so I can see that their partner is not comfortable on a motorcycle. Maybe like uh, they have uh, Apache RR 310. I can see the girl is not at all happy. By and you can't. Buy a GT. And uh, you can't push somebody if they are not comfortable with it. Maybe just go solo. But the thing is that make sure that you come home in one piece. 
because uh, you will have a lot of i think everybody has a lot of responsibilities uh, at home so just keep that in mind whenever you are writing so i think we will wrap it up and uh, uh, guys if you have any questions you can share in the comment section if you have any suggestions and if you want to see more of this kind of content we'll cover a lot of topics in future let us know the topics we'll be there to touch it up break it down rip it apart and take out the facts and yes please uh, uh, i think everyone can share their uh, instagram handles uh, in case uh, if you have any questions with uh, somebody in particular you can ask so so my instagram handle is shomojit dot vlogs and it goes same for my youtube channel uh, you will mostly find travel related content so I, have, i can assure that you will find it interesting uh, so mine is i don't have a youtube i don't do youtube but uh, i my instagram is mr talundar rahul talundar you'll know it when you see it so yeah that's it you will mostly find mostly bikes and some other stuff going around treks and things like that i am into a lot of things so you'll find all of these so for for youtube i don't make cute girl reaction videos so i am not into youtube that's why he is on this video yeah i don't make cute girl reaction that's why i'm not on youtube but i am on instagram and i like motorcycle so yeah you guys can follow me the instagram handle will be mr bondless 46 up to you mr motorzo yes obviously uh, that is all legend that is all uh, for today and uh, special thanks to the man behind the camera also Six and Yes, if you if you guys want to shoot something like this, um, <laughs> no, he's he's engaged. <laughs> so if you guys want to shoot something like this in a concept, if you have any concept, if you like any topic or niche, if you want to cover, uh, he has everything. We have a team, and uh, you don't need to spend anything on you know gears and all. We have everything. Uh, please contact Pixmax and. Uh, will be very happy to cover events no me hum wo hum i'll take that what you call it, brokerage <laughs> just kidding so uh, if you if you want to make something like this if you have an indoor like a place where you want to shoot a podcast maybe something like this so feel free to contact him for photo shoots also and uh, yes pixmax will be covering a lot of these podcasts in future and we will be making quality content together so yes great things coming up please stay tuned and we'll see you again in the next episode